Hey guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create some kind of watercolor ink bleeding effect in After Effects. It's going to be pretty fun and easy with the assets I'm about to provide you. But before we begin, I want to thank our friends from Squarespace for sponsoring today's tutorial. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, head over to squarespace.com and use the promo code DOJO8. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. So that is essentially what we're going to be creating. We're going to be creating this kind of reveal effect right here. And again, the reveal part is actually going to be very, very easy with the assets I'm about to provide you. But I really want to focus on the styling effect of this. So how we have this kind of... Um, pen or pencil drawn effect here first so just the outline part and then it proceeds through the whole ink fading effect right here so we have kind of the watercolor ink bleeding effect here so that's what I kind of want to focus on just kind of the styling of it and to show you how to use the ink map pack from the creative dojo that I created for you guys free to download over at creativedojo.net the link will be in the video description down below so let's go ahead and take a look at how to do some after effects I'm going to share some tips with you on how to do this while using ink mats that I provided so let's go ahead and close this and we'll hop into a new After Effects comp that I just prepared right here. Nothing more than just a, a background layer here, as well as a paper texture, but some blending modes and some color correction on it. First of all, I'm going to create a new composition. And this is going to be the, I guess, the media placeholder. So I'm going to call this image slash video. So you can place your logo into this composition. You can place your, your picture, your text, whatever you want. You can place it in this composition. It just makes it easier to customize and edit later on if you want to change the, you know, the picture, the image, the video, and then it makes everything procedural. So in this composition, I'm going to go ahead and drag in an image that I have here. So this is my image of the house and I'll just scale this thing down. And this is going to be the image that I want to reveal using the ink effect. So this is cool. I'll just drag my image in here. We'll go back into the ink reveal tutorial here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and drag in that composition that I just created, the image slash video comp here. So, so here I have my image here, and it doesn't reveal yet. It doesn't really do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down even more around, you know, right here or so. And then I'm going to go into my ink mat pack again, which you can download absolutely free. It's a huge collection of ink mats I created. And as you can see, we have a ton of variations. We have some dark ones here that cover majority of the frame here with some really really dark ones that will you know essentially give you a full reveal here we also have some reversal ones that kind of come in and then comes out so it's all pre-animated and stuff like that and we have some small ones in case you want to you know just a re reveal a small portion of your I guess your composition frame here we also have some full ones that completely uh, fade into black so you can actually do a really interesting reveal that way. So there are tons of variations for different needs and different projects. So hopefully you find these ink mat packs very uh, interesting and very handy to use in your project. So that's that. So let's go ahead and pick one here. Actually, let's go ahead and choose the ink small mat here. And you can, as you can see, this is what it looks like. We will scale this thing down to roughly the same size as you know, our image and video here. And I want to point out some issues when things don't line up. So I'm going to go ahead and place the, the ink mat above our video or our composition here. And so when we hit F4 or toggle the switches, we're going to see the track mats. And then when we select Luma inverted mat for our image slash video composition, as you can see, it uses the layer above it as a mat. And since it's set to Luma inverted, it's going to be flipped so whatever is white is going to be I guess negative value what is black is going to be positive value so the black ink is actually going to be revealing whatever the media is so as you can see right here at the beginning we are starting with pure white and then as we progress through the black areas are going to reveal what the asset is so in this case our image here and already you start to see kind of an issue here because our composition is a square or a rectangle, we see these kind of rough edges and that's not what we want. We want to relatively scale down the mat to the roughly the same size as our image here. So 
our image is around this big, so we need to scale down the ink mat to around that size as well. So you want to scale it down to roughly the same visible space as the actual asset here. And as you can see, we already have a problem here. So if the ink mat is too small, if it's smaller than the actual uh, size dimensions of the, the you know the image that you want to reveal, you're gonna get some issues here because there's no mat at all applied to this area. So it's just gonna show the image. So there's no you know there's no mat controlling these outside areas. So you want to make sure that you know your image is not too large, not too small for your ink. And you, so it's kind of like you're you're gonna have to be tweaking around with the actual sizes of both the ink mat as well as your image that you want to reveal. So I want to keep our image the same size just for this tutorial sake here. So I'm only gonna be adjusting the size of the ink mat. So we want it to be around right here, right? Because height wise, we don't want the ink to be higher in height than the actual image because we're gonna see some cutoffs at the height. So I'm going to take care of the height first. I'm going to scale it down to make sure that the height is the priority. So we do not want to make it taller than the actual image here. So that's cool. So now we have a width issue here. So I'm going to just stretch the ink mat out a little bit. And that shouldn't cause a problem. And just stretch out the height a little bit. And that's pretty cool. But let me show you a quick trick to do, um, you know, in case you want your ink mat to be this small, let's say. Let's say you want your ink mat to be this small. And unfortunately, since our mat is too small, our image is actually revealing here because again, this area is not covered by the mat. So let me show you a quick little trick. So I'm going to select this ink right here. And again, we want it at this size. So we'll change the Luma mat back to no mat for now. We'll go and select the ink mat. We'll go to layer and we'll go pre-compose and we'll just call this one ink mat larger because we're going to expand this mat. And you can actually hop in here and as you can see, it's scaled down, it's too small, but we can actually create a white solid background. You know, make sure it's completely pure white and we'll just call this one VG and then place it below our mat. So as you can see, we essentially extended the mat area. So our ink is actually the same size. Our ink is still this size right here, except we extended the white area so that now, if you go back into the tutorial composition here, and we set it back to Luma inverted mat, you can see we don't have that issue before. So before, without the extension, you know, this is the size of our ink mat. And as you can see, it looks well, except, you know, the edges are not covered by the mat. So because we enlarged the mat with a white background, you can see that it actually extends the mat and the mat actually covers the whole entire image now. So that's a really quick tip to just kind of extend you know, the negative values by, you know, just enlarging the mat. But if you look closely at this image here, you can see that it doesn't really have that watercolor effect. We have a watercolor type reveal here, but we don't really have the image looking like a watercolor effect. And I want to talk about that and how to set that up um, after we thank our sponsors over at Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to be. They make it extremely easy and quick to set up an online presence, allowing you to pick from over 20 highly customizable and professional design templates. With their click and drag visual interface, adding content is extremely fast and efficient, allowing you to focus more on your content and what you love instead of worrying about all the technical stuff. They have awesome 24 seven support and starting at just $8 a month, you can get a free domain if you sign up for a year. You can start your free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com, no credit card required. Now, when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code DOJO8 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So back to the tutorial, I wanna talk about how to stylize this thing to make it look more like a watercolor ink effect. And there's two ways to do that. My favorite way is to actually use a effect or a plugin from Red Giant. It's called Tunit here. So if we go to Red Giant Tunit, you can, if you have this plugin, you can actually select Rototune. So once you apply Tune It, it kind of creates a very watercolor ink effect naturally right out of the box. And of course, you have tons of presets to choose from, from flat shaded to airbrush to you know droplet. These will give you a different effect, and it may be the effect that you're looking for. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it at default at flat shaded. I'm also going to go down to the comic outlines and turn off comic outlines. And that will just clean up some of this, you know, outlines of this watercolor. Now, if you don't have this plugin, you can actually use something called um, under stylized. You can use something called the cartoon effect, and it does kind of the same thing. A little bit slower, less room to customize. 
and you're limited on the presets but it kind of does the same exact thing without a paid plugin here so we are actually going to be using the cartoon effect for a separate thing here so let's go and take a look at that real quick so right now we have this kind of ink reveal effect here and this is looking pretty good but i want to focus on how to create that outlines effect and using the outline effect on you know from tune it doesn't really look you know as well as i think it could so let's go ahead and show you how to do that with cartoons so first of all you, you want to make sure that you know your matte layer it's the same duration I guess as your actual footage here so if you go too far you're gonna see some weird stuff happen so just trim down your layers to to the exact same length here you want it to start at the same time as your layer so I'm gonna go ahead and shift these layers to the right a little bit so they kind of start a little bit later in the timeline here now one thing I want to do real quick before we begin on the outlines is actually reverse the effect. So right now we have our ink mat here and it kind of just reveals and it just stays there you know until it just cuts off and that's not what I want to do. I want to actually have it reverse through and a quick way to do that is actually uh, time remap it. So we can actually right click on the ink, uh, you know the ink mat, we can go to time, go to enable time remapping and this will allow us to tweak around with the time. So I'm gonna go to around the halfway point right when the ink is pretty much revealed, right? So I'm gonna hit a key for that. And it will hold that freeze for, you know, maybe like a few frames here. And then we'll move forward to the very end and we'll just copy this keyframe here, the very beginning, and paste it, control command V, delete this last keyframe. So what we have now, it's pretty much a reversal effect. So the ink is going to reveal first, it's going to pause for a bit, and then it's going to go in reverse to the beginning. So it's going to go forward and it's going to go kind of in reverse order. And that's how you kind of create the, the reversal effect. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. And of course you can adjust the timing of these things. So if you want to uh, reveal it faster, you can actually move these keyframes forward. If you want to kind of, you know, reveal away longer you can actually tweak these keyframes and you know play with the, the graph editor here so we can actually easy ease these keyframes uh, we can go to the graph editor and you know we want to smoothly gradually fade in and then we want to gradually fade out you know we can adjust the curves and all that stuff and this is a very quick and easy way to adjust the timing and you know reversing the effect of the ink mat now let's go and talk about the outline effect so now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and duplicate these two here. So I'm going to duplicate the actual image as well as the actual mat. So I'm going to rename these. I'm going to call this one the actual watercolor mat. And this is going to be the actual outline mat. And I'm going to color code these because once you create a lot of these duplicates, you can actually get some messy compositions. So I'm going to just color code these so that they're kind of organizing groups. So that's cool. I want to move these two layers here, the outline layers up front. All right, so we want the outline to start first, and then we want the watercolor to come in. Actually, I just noticed that we did not apply the tune it effect to the actual correct layer. We want to apply the tune it effect to the actual image layer. So now we get more of a subtle effect here. So th th this is what we're talking about here. So sorry about that. I'll go ahead and copy tune it effect. We apply it to the mat instead of the actual image here. So I'm going to go back into the outline layer here. I'm going to delete the tune it effect. So instead of using tune it, I'm going to be applying the cartoon effect. So go to effect, stylize, and we'll apply cartoon. And right now I'm just going to shut off the watercolor effect here. So we're just focusing on the outline. So right here we have the cartoon effect. And we do not want to render the fill, which is kind of like the actual paint effect. We want it to only render the edges, which is the outline here. So right here we just have the outlines and it doesn't look too good. So what we can do is we can go to the transfer mode or the blending modes and go from normal to multiply. And that will get rid of all the white and leave the blacks. And so here we have the outlines. And so we can go into the edge tab here and adjust the threshold. So what exactly is getting the edge effect applied? And we can change the width of the outline to maybe like 1.2 to make smaller, thinner strokes here. We can play with the softness, maybe around 70 or so, and we can change the opacity down to maybe around 80%, so not as strong. And then, depending on your image, you want to adjust the threshold 
you don't want to have too much outlines here so we just want a little bit so maybe around like right here or so and since this layer here is using the, the luma mat it's going to reveal in a very organic inky matter here so if you scrub through the timeline here you can see that our outline is revealing first and they would just turn on the watercolor effect so our outline is revealing first and then the actual watercolor and then I want them to end approximately at the same time. So we will go into the, hit you and the keyboard to show time remap for both of the mats here. And we kind of want it to end at the same time. So we just push this back a little bit and then we'll just trim our composition down. So just like that, we have a nice little stencil, I guess, drawing portion right here. And then we have our watercolor effect. And by quickly adding, you know, a camera move, you can get some pretty interesting results here. So we can create a camera and, you know, we'll make it 50 millimeters, call it camera. You can enable depth of field. You want to create some interesting angles here. So I'm going to make all my layers 3D pretty much, you know, all the, the mats as well as the actual layers we want to reveal. We'll make them 3D layers and then we'll start the beginning here. You know, we will kind of zoom in a little bit. Hit P on the key, work for the position, and we'll move to the end, and we'll just kind of zoom in. So what we have is kind of like a zooming effect. Everything, that's pretty cool. And that's how you create a ink on effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick color correction. We'll call this uh, looks. And one way to kind of focus our attention on the ink effect is to add somewhat of a, uh, a soft focus here. So I'm gonna go to the color suite and we'll go into uh, magic bullet looks and we'll go to edit and for tutorial sake I'm going to select a preset here warm spot focus look here and maybe we can tone down the contrast a little bit but as you can see we have kind of like the soft focus effect which kind of just blurs everything out on the edges except for the uh, center here and that just kind of gives you kind of like a fake depth of field depth uh, fake focus look here so we have something like that and you can go in and apply some more color correction and stuff like that but you know essentially that's how you create the ink reveal effect here so you can actually create some very interesting animations using different kind of camera angles so for an example I have the second camera here that I created in the original demonstration and this is kind of like the up close, you know, really low angle view. So, you know, by doing a few camera moves like this, enabling depth of field, you can get some very, very interesting looks very, very easily. And you can extend on this animation very, very easily. So definitely stay organized, add some interesting camera moves, stylize it, you know, color correction, color grade it and all that stuff and make it look really, really good. Now, one last thing before I go, I know some of you guys are going to be very interested in how I created the kind of matte effect. And there's actually multiple ways of doing this. In this particular demonstration, you know we're going for a motion graphic kind of cartoonish look you know I mean it looks somewhat realistic but it doesn't look as organic as it would be if we were trying to create a realistic kind of ink bleed effect so in this case it was very easy to do um, you can do it many many ways using fractal noise because fractal noise will give you a more organic you know flowing kind of ink reveal effect so if you want to create something a little bit more realistic and organic use your fractal noise effect you can easily animate it from black and white and adjust the settings you know scale and all that stuff but if you want to create somewhat of an ink cartoonish effect, you can use uh, a particle system like Trap Code 4 in particular or Mask, wherever you want. You can create some, you know, some interesting shapes like this. I use Form just because it was very, very easy to control the random speed, the size, randomness and stuff like that. So essentially you want to create these kind of like black blobs here. And you can add these fine details by adding, you know, a turbulent displays and just adjusting the size very, very low. So, you know, I don't want to cover too much detail in this because I spent a lot of time, you know, pre-rendering all these different mats for you guys. And it's very, very easy to tweak and you can actually tweak those as well. So just a really quick tutorial um, showing you guys how to do a really quick uh, ink reveal effect simply in After Effects using the free ink map pack by the creativedojo.net. Again, the link will be down in the article below, so check that out, free to download. So this has just been a really quick tutorial from all the requests I've been getting about, you know, ink reveals and watercolor effects and stuff like that. So hopefully it kind of helped you guys, give you the idea on how to do something like this. So once again, my name is Vincent Wynn from the creativedojo.net. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.